Well, I'm Blood This is George G, and the time is right. Welcome to today's guest, strong, powerful John David Latta. John, are you ready to do this? I'm ready. Thanks for the invitation, George. I'm excited to have you on. Let's go. John is an author, a teacher, and an everyday mystic. He was is the CEO of a multi-million dollar consumer products company. His newest book is The Synchronicity of Love, Stories That Heal, Transform, and Awaken. John, tell us a little bit about your personal life, some more about your work, and why you do what you do. <laughs> well, uh, I was the CEO and founder of a multi-million dollar consumer products company, but I sold it right before COVID hit. I regularly get down and kiss the ground because of that. Talk <laughs> about lucky timing. Uh, I own a large chemical company and you know the supply chain issues have been horrific ever since then. So now I am an author and I'm out there peddling my book. It's part of the reason I'm hanging out with you this morning. And so that's what I'm doing now. Um, the message I'm sharing in the book uh, my wife thinks I could have titled the book Rigid Rational Male Transforms into Random Accidental Mystic. <laughs> and that might have been a better title. And so what I'm probably the message I'm out there talking to people about now is all you rigid, rational, know-it-alls, men and women, um, there's a lot more to life. And, um, and I discovered that, uh, like so many people do, by getting dragged through the mud, kicking, screaming, kind of hitting rock bottom. And... Um, and so the, the book chronicles the last 20 years of my life and a lot of shocking, unexpected and synchronistic experiences that I never knew were possible kept happening over and over and over again. So my, my message in the world today is reaching out to all you rigid, rational know-it-alls. I was one of them for most of my life. Uh, there's a lot more to life and uh, to, to open your eyes, open your heart. What's the benefit of being rigid and rational? <laughs> the benefit, uh, the benefit is, well, you know, the world is actually, I think in a lot of ways set up to be rigid and rational. And so one of the benefits is you fit in really well. I think you can be function very well in business and life and in the world being rigid and rational, but there's a certain, uh, sterility to it. It's sterile. It just, there's the sense always that it feels like something's missing. So, um, uh, and the other benefit of being rigid and rational is you think, you know, a lot <laughs> it turns out you don't. But it, there is that sort of false sense of feeling uh, secure, I think, in, in the world that you've created for yourself. It's uh, security, a confidence in, 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 in knowledge and, and control and, and mastery kind of a thing. Yeah, but I think it's a false sense. Um, you know, uh, rigid and rational, it's you've created a framework for yourself that I think is sort of limiting without knowing it, you've limited yourself. You know, I was really influenced at a really young age by uh, books, Think and Grow Rich, The Magic of Thinking Big. And so I would kind of go back and forth between anything is possible and now oh, that's bullshit, that's not possible. <laughs> <laughs> and I kind of took on the, uh, that's not possible for a long period of time in my life. And like I said, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Um, I don't think most people know how much they've self-limited themselves. Yeah. Yeah. I think that that's really interesting. So when, what, what got you started breaking out of that uh, framework? Yeah. Uh, probably like most people going, like I said, being dragged through the mud through hell. So I had lived what I thought was a relatively charmed life. And then all of a sudden, all at once, everything that could go wrong, all went wrong all at the same time. Uh, my wife got cancer, came completely out of left field. She was only in her thirties, took good care of herself. And, um, God, like even two weeks after she was diagnosed with cancer, they took out her entire thyroid gland and a bunch of lymph nodes. And to this day, she has to take a pill every day for the rest of her life just to live. And um, it changed her. She started reading books about God and the meaning of life and started kind of having her own little life review. Is this really what I want from life? And I, I wasn't capable or able at that age and stage of my life to even be there for her. She was going through it. At the same time, I left my very secure job and started my own company and promptly lost all of our money, a whole bunch of money, 650000 in debt. A uh, quarter million personal credit card debt, you know, borrowed against the house, a uh, hundred thousand SBA loan. And every day I was facing bankruptcy. So the company grew like crazy, but the losses grew even faster. And, um, and then uh, um, 
at that same time, for whatever reason, suddenly I have this horrible fear of death. It was stalking me everywhere I went. And I was not religious. I was not spiritual. I didn't know who to talk to. I didn't have, I don't think I even would have talked to anybody about it, but I was terrified of death. And I kept thinking of death as like the body, me dies, and then it's gone forever. And I couldn't wrap my head around forever. It was terrifying for me. And so in the middle of it all, my wife walks out at me and says, you take the kids, you're the better parent. I want a whole life, new life, <laughs> goodbye. And so I'm a single parent with custody of my nine-year-old and 11-year-old. And so I felt like in the blink of an eye, I was suddenly a bad husband, bad dad, bad businessman, and a grown man running around behind closed doors, terrified of death. So I did what I uh, never thought I would ever do. I signed up for a spiritual retreat. And it was something that Michael Crichton, the author, who I really loved, had gone through years earlier. And um, and I didn't have a lot of crazy spiritual experiences there. But what did happen was a lot of synchronicity started to happen. And I didn't even know what the word meant. And to me, I just called him, wow, that was a coincidence. Hmm. Wow, there's another coincidence. And it started with me flying to the retreat. The lady sitting next to me was reading the retreat leader's book as the plane was touching down and the only two people in that flight of 180 people going were me and her. And I'm mm -hmm. like, what are the chances of that? And so every, all the doors of my life started to open after that retreat. And looking back, sometimes when you're really stuck in, you know, things are just going all to hell, you can't see what's going on. But with retrospect, looking back, I could see I was in a tremendous period of growth and um, what I would call I had lived out a highly masculine view of life, competitive, hardworking, go, 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 do, do, do. And I loved it. High energy, high intensity. I, you know, over the next 20 years, you would say I came into my feminine side and into a spiritual side, two sides I didn't really know I had or even existed out there. So, but what started it to answer your question was devolving into what felt like my scariest form of hell. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you for sharing that. So life's a funny thing. They, John, <laughs> is, is, yeah. is, is life a funny thing? It is a funny thing. In retrospect, it's hysterical. When you're in it, it doesn't always seem so funny. No. <laughs> actually, love is a really funny thing. But yeah, and that, that's a whole other subject. Sometimes I think I've learned after all this time, we all take life too seriously, myself included. And um uh, yeah, humor is, in my opinion, the great healer and the great transformer. So what does it mean to 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 awaken? Well, so that's a great question. Uh, and that's a popular word that's around politics now. You know, people are woke, people mm. are awakened. And but what it really means is uh, here's the best way I can put it. Um if you dig deep enough, it turns out we've had many lives, almost all of us. And, and so what we would call an old soul, which is a common term, is somebody who's actually had many, 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 many lifetimes. And you see this sometimes even in children. They're just unusually wise for their age, even though they might only be five or 10 years old. And, um, and so awakening is really just remembering it's remembering all the skills you've actually had all along you just didn't know you had it's remembering all the things that you knew but you just forgot and so i think a better term for waking up is actually remembering but how it's experienced by a lot of people is it feels like wow i've been asleep and i i think you know a lot of spiritual teachers jesus so many others um you know the only real sin it's not me being a bad person or doing bad things. The real sin is just ignorance. And for whatever reason, part of the human journey is um, being ignorant, living out life sort of one-sided. And then we start to remember and we start to wake up. And it, there seems to be a divine timing around that, or it seems to come around sometimes when people hit rock bottom. Um, but that's what awakening means. It's really just remembering all the wisdom you've actually accumulated through many past lifetimes could be hundreds and hundreds of lifetimes. And uh, it just seems to be the human journey. And until that time, we tend to live in the sort of our, our little, I call it the rigid world of ignorance where we think we know it all, but we really don't. <clears throat> well, I thank you for that. The, the real sin is ignorance. 
Yeah. And is it not necessarily that I I'm ignorant? It's that I'm not trying to to or I'm 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 not pushing myself. I'm not I'm not exploring these things. I'm not trying to remember the things that I knew, but for whatever reason, I've forgotten. Yeah, when I say the real sin is ignorance, it doesn't mean I'm a bad person because I'm ignorant. I'm that is the sin is ignorance. And we all come in ignorant. I shouldn't say all. Most of us come in ignorant to one degree or another, because I think that's how we learn. We learn by being one-sided. Uh, we learn by being hyper-masculine. We learn through contrast. And, um, and so I think it's just part of the human journey to come in and be one-sided. We explore, I'm going to say, being the hero. In this lifetime, I'm the hero. In the next lifetime, I explore being the villain. But it never occurs to me that I'm both the hero and the villain and a whole bunch more because of all my past lifetime experience. So um, I think it's just I think there's a little bit of a divine timing behind it all. We live our lives sort of one sided uh, and then we have the opportunity later in life to sort of wake up to the other half of our life. I don't know if that makes sense. <clears throat> I, it's uh, it's it's hugely thought provoking and. <laughs> here's what I was thinking. I've I was always, I've always resisted and had a hard time, you know, categorizing myself. And right. I think that that's arrogance. It's, it's maybe honesty because nothing has ever really felt just right. It's like, yeah. what, who, who are you? What do you do? I'm like, well, you know, I, I just have a hard time with that. Um, it's not because I'm, you know, I, I'm not sure what that is, John. Yeah. Well, I'm a podcast host. I got a great voice. I'm a great host. <laughs> Not everybody's a podcast host, but, you know, and a great one with a great voice. So, <laughs> you know, uh, some people, it cracks me up when I wrote my book and my publisher said, now I want you to get out on 50 podcasts by year end. It's like, podcasts? I'm not a podcast person, you know, but it was kind of cool. Uh, my wife had talked me into doing a bunch of online improv classes which I wasn't interested in. And it's amazing how improv can prepare you for being on a podcast. Because so many podcast hosts want it to be sort of, um, you know, just sort of flow. Let's see where it goes. And that really requires me as the guest tuning into the host and really listening and not trying to take command of the podcast, which, you know, I've been in management my whole life. So I tend to boss people around. <laughs> So I've had to really learn to listen and kind of tie into like, what's this podcast host? Where's the podcast goes going with this and just roll with it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I certainly appreciate that. So we talked about, I asked you what, what was the benefit of being rigid and rational and a know-it-all? Yeah. Um, and we certainly covered that and thank you. So the benefit of, of becoming of, 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 engaging this journey has been what? Well, I think um, it's more enlivening. It's more revitalizing. It's kind of like dying and being reborn all the time. There's a very practical aspect to it too. Um, I know in the early days, you know, that first spiritual teacher I worked with, and this was 20 years ago, he could see what was happening to me. And he goes, I, he goes, John, you're not going to lose your overly developed masculine side as you delve into all things feminine you're going to ultimately be more whole and more resourceful. And so that's the benefit. The more you expand into many different areas of your life, the more resourceful you are in every different situation. And I, boy, I certainly learned um, to be a much better listener just to start at the beginning with that. I, uh, I, I think I mostly talked over people and told them what to do, which is a great quality when you're running a large organization sometimes, but being a good listener is a good quality too. So that's what I say. I would say you find yourself, life is richer and you find yourself more uh, resourceful and capable in any different situation. What do you think about instincts and intuition? Um, well, having, yeah. So um, I think it's great. I think anybody that's got an entrepreneurial mindset probably is doing it already. Um, I think intuition is the great gift. I love the quote from Einstein where he says, intuition is the gift and logic is its faithful servant, but we've elevated the servant and forgotten the gift. And so I encourage anybody to, uh, intuition is something that can be open to, it can be developed. 
Um, and I would say that was probably one of the biggest um, things I've learned in the last 20 years is that I actually have intuition and to actually pay attention to it. I, I swear, George, where I get myself in trouble is when I don't listen to it. <laughs> is that is that our and pardon me for for using clumsy terms yeah. is that our real identity telling us the truth about things um that's a great question uh some people would say that um and some people would say we all have a guide or a guardian angel that's with us all the time we just don't ever know it most of the time we don't pay attention to it uh, some say we always have a higher wisdom with us all the time, but we don't always listen to it. And I can tell you, for me, intuition is like a subtle, quiet voice. I'm going to say my ego and my day-to-day -day personality is much louder, and I drown it out. So I, I can't say specifically if that's who I really am or if something wiser than me is talking to me. Um, and I, you, know, you, you mentioned intuition and instinct. People get intuition uh, different ways. I, I literally was having lunch with a gal uh, the other day and she, I kept talking about, I was talking about some things and she kept showing me her forearm. I'm like, what, what do you, yeah, I just, <laughs> what am I, what am I supposed to be seeing here? And she goes, truth bumps, truth bumps, you know? Well, and she gets a rash of instant goosebumps over her skin. Anytime somebody is telling her the truth. And uh, I was like, Oh, cool. So everybody gets messages in different ways. Um, some people see things visually. Some people literally have voices in their head. Some people, it's a felt sensation, in her case, in her skin. A lot of people, you know, that you hear people talk about their gut, it's a gut yes or no. And so um, everybody has a different way of accessing beyond just what the mind is telling you at the moment. <clears throat> and I think a lot of people, you know, Sir Richard Branson is England's most successful entrepreneur, billionaire. A lot of people don't know he never got past ninth grade in school. He was terribly dyslexic. He was very athletic, but had a terrible, I think, knee injury in eighth grade that ended his athletic career. So poor guy couldn't, couldn't go to school academically, and he couldn't play sports anymore. But he said as a result of it all, uh, he became highly intuitive because uh, he, he couldn't depend on reading the way other people could. And... Um, and I think that guy founded some ridiculous number of, you know, over 200 companies. And it started with Virgin Records when he was a teenager. And he goes, ever since I was a kid, when I started my first company, I knew when somebody applied for work, I knew within 30 seconds if that was the perfect person for me. I didn't need to know their resume, their background or anything. I just knew. And so some people really rely on that, that sense of, I just know. And so I think that's something that everybody should consider developing because boy, it sure worked for him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's no doubt about that. I love it. Yeah. Well, John, thank you so much for coming on. Where can people learn more about you and where can they get a copy of the synchronicity of love stories that heal, transform and awaken? Yeah. My website is John David Last name is L A T T A John David Everything is there. My book, The Synchronicity of Love, you can find it uh, on Amazon, Barnes & Noble. And I just found out yesterday it's available at Target and Walmart.com. It's actually cheaper there, too. Um, so, yeah, that's where you can find the book. Excellent. Well, if you enjoyed this much as I did, show John your appreciation and share today's show with a friend who also appreciates good ideas. Okay. And for all those rigid, rational know-it-alls out there, for sure, pick up a copy. <laughs> <laughs> And go to johndavidlata.com, J-O-H-N-D-A-V-I-D-L-A-T-T-A.com, and then pick up a copy of The Synchronicity of Love. Sounds like wherever you buy your books. Thanks again, John. Thank you, George. Appreciate the invitation. And until next time, remember, do your part by doing your best.